going to start out by uh, starting my camera there. I'm going to say hello from my home office where most of us seem to be working these days. I'm going to turn my camera back off for the presentation so you guys aren't looking at me, but hello. All right, let's get started. So today's webinar is being prepared, the three best practices for working from home. And we're gonna look at it from both employer and employee perspectives. Um, one of the things I wanna do real quick as a, as a piece of housekeeping is I wanna make sure my screen is, is actually activated. So Sylvie, can you um, let me know, just give me a, a verbal yes. Do you, you see the screen okay? Yeah, I'm seeing a welcome screen. All right, perfect, perfect. Well, let's get rolling here. So um, there's our requisite copyright information. We'll skip on past that and we'll get to some housekeeping. So for those who have not used the platform that we're using, which is actually GoToWebinar, um, we are gonna ask for this to be a little bit interactive today, but we're gonna keep everybody muted to avoid um, you know, normal uh, household type uh, noises and things that might go on, dark, dogs and other things, uh, doorbells. So um, this is uh, what you'll see. You should have it on um, the right side of your screen unless you've moved it. It's the participant window and there's a few things that we want to highlight here you've got um, the question box so if you have a question we highly uh, encourage participation you can enter a question and hit enter or that little send button there if you want to click on that and your question will pop in and one of us will, will take that question we'll, we'll be taking questions throughout but we'll also have a Q&A at the end so if we're kind of on a roll we may wait to the end or we may answer it through throughout the course of the discussion. There's also, um, just wanted to highlight there that we want uh, questions and comments in the box there. There'll also be a survey which will pop out of the, um, pop out of that polls box that you see there on the right side as well. So we'll get working from there. All right, so what is today about? How about some virtual fun? So what is remote working all about? So this is a, a nice little meme off the internet there. You know, what my think, friends think I do, sitting there gambling, what society thinks I do, sitting around sleeping all day. Co-workers think I'm out having a great time. Uh, boss thinks you're just kind of chilling out. Um, your your version of yourself may be that you're just kind of being really cool and being on your machine there. But the reality is it's it's work. And working from home is like working at the office. There's uh, there's a lot to do, and you're going to be you know you're going to be busy. So um, there's also a great little video clip there on the right side. That should be an interactive clip on the on the webinar when you get it. Um, the deck and click on that. Those guys, um, Trip and Tyler, make a bunch of these, but this is actually a clip of what a, a virtual meeting is like, and I'm sure everybody's experienced some of these things. So there's there's some funny little bits in there. All right. So uh, the presenters today, that's me on the left. You already saw me on the screen. Um, I'm the CEO and founder of Innovative E, and we have Sylvie Fortier. I know she's one of our project managers, one of our um, senior leaders in the in the organization as well. So if you want to say hi, Sylvie. Hello, everyone, and welcome. And we also have uh, moderators. We'll have uh, Brian Quick and Pamela Melville, and they're available. There's their email address. They'll be monitoring those um, question boxes and chat windows if you guys have any questions or anything that you need answered along the way. So moving right into it. Uh, what would you like to get from today? So we had a lot of people sign up for the webinar and a lot, almost everybody put in, you know, what, what it is they'd like to get from today's discussion. So here's some of the things that we saw that folks wanted to get out of it. So strategies from working from home. So we're definitely going to cover that. That's going to be pretty much what this is all about is the strategies. We'll get into a little bit of the tactics and, and um, some recommendations, um, but we'll probably there's, there's just too much to cover uh, to go through everything in great detail. So we'll talk about some some follow-up things. We'll have some cheat sheets and, and additional um, offerings that we'll do to for you know more detailed things into tools and, and techniques and all that kind of stuff. So um, tips and tricks, we'll definitely cover that. And I, we'll actually have a tips and tricks sheet that we send out afterwards. How to facilitate effective collaboration conversation among remote team members. Well, we're definitely going to cover the, that today, um, at least at a high level. We've got uh, best practices. There were uh, there were dozens of responses. People just wanted to know some best practices. So that's really the focus of what we're going to do at a high level. We're going to cover three best practice areas and and what that means in those three areas. How to manage the challenges of working remotely. We'll definitely delve into a, a few of these and and. There are some people who I'm sure who've worked remotely before um, and understand what some of these are, but we've, we've been doing this a long time. So we'll, uh, we'll highlight some of the things that we've seen over and over again. So 
we've been vir a virtual company for a long time, which is kind of the reason we decided to, to do this. We have people all over the US. Um, we have a development and a delivery set of offices over in Colombo and Kandy, Sri Lanka, and there's another one that's being opened in the south part of the country. We, um, we've done a lot of delivery virtually for hundreds of clients and probably thousands of engagements over the years, and almost all of them are virtual. Not to say that we don't go on site and we have, you know, we, we do a lot of the upfront work up on site, you know, the requirements, the things that we work with people that require hand, you know, in person kind of delivery or in person um, conversations, the training and things like that that we do uh, oftentimes is done on site. But probably 90, 95% of the work we do is virtual because we are so virtual and we have been for 15 plus years. So we have a lot of experience in this space. Um, and so that's really what prompted this with, with the what's going on um, in, in the world today. It doesn't need to be, you know, the name, the, the word that doesn't need to be said. Um, you know, a recent survey said that about five, six percent of the workforce were full-time work from home, and that at least 43 percent had done some work from outside the office. Well, as we all know, the recent events are, are forcing a rapid and huge shift in these figures. Um, very high percentages of people um, are starting to work from home effectively this week and probably for the next several weeks, and there's, there's some some you know, research and writing that's coming out rapidly that's saying maybe this will be a tipping point that a larger percentage of the workforce after you know, we're through the, the current situation that's going on um, will, will remain work at home or at least a higher percentage of time work at home. So it's really a good time to, um, to kind of look at you know, what it is that, that this kind of new paradigm is going to be all about. And that's why we figured we'd share some of our best practices and, and hopefully it's helpful for everyone. So with that, what we want to do is we actually want to take our first poll. So see, we want to make sure everybody's paying attention. So in terms of WFH, or work from home, or virtual, as it's known, um, there's all kinds of acronyms for it. Um, tell us a little bit about what's going on. So is this a brand new experience? You've never done it before? Uh, is this a, you've done some work at home, but not much? I'm going to put a poll up in a minute, by the way. So don't worry about how you answer it. You'll see it'll pop up in a second. And then, um, I've done maybe 50% or more work from home in the past, or uh, I, I work virtually full-time already from home. So with that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start the poll and give you guys a few minutes. So the poll should be available now. So again, you should see the little screen with the radio buttons there. Is it a brand new experience to you? I've never done it much before. I've done some work from home, but not much. I've done 50% or more in the past, or I'm almost full time. So if you would just click on one of those little radio buttons, that kind of tells you, um, you know, what's going on. So we're starting to get some votes in, getting more votes in. Awesome, good stuff. Yeah, hey, everybody's participating. See, this is one of the work from home lessons we're going to be talking about today. Is get, is how do you get people to engage work from home? Because as we all know, and we've all done it before, even if you were working in the office and you were on a web meeting or something, and the next thing you know, it gets a little boring, and your 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 screen, you're off your main screen. You might be looking at your email or something else. So, uh, what are some strategies for keeping people engaged? So, so let's see. We're going to give people just one more minute here, and. Um, we're going to look at what some of these results are. So I'm going to close this poll now. And um, you should have the screen back up. And it looks like, let's see, here's some, I'm going to take some notes. Oops, let's go back and do my pen here. Let's do my pen. Um, brand new experience, 14%. Done some work from home. This is 29%. And actually, it's pretty well distributed the rest of the way, 29% and 29%. So it looks like, you know, um, about half has not done much work from home and, and the other half has done at least 50% or almost full time. So it's a pretty mixed bag of the audience that we have here today. So we're gonna move straight into what are the best practice areas for virtual work? So really we're breaking these into three core pieces or three core areas to look at. And it's really going to be the, um, the ability, the alignment, and the culture. So we're going to start with the ability. So this is really comes down to a couple different areas. It comes down to the tools that you need to work 
and it comes down to the environment you need. And we could probably spend a couple hours going through <laughs> all of the things we've seen over the years in, in terms of technology and as it's evolved and what works well and, and kind of where some of the hiccups are. Some of the things have, you know, over the years, things have gotten much better um, with the, the proliferation of broadband technologies and, and capabilities and, and wireless and everything else. But there are still some things that persist that we see. So we're gonna actually jump into those right now. So really, the um, the core that you have to have to, to be able to work remotely, and it, it almost seems um, redundant in saying it, is you have to have the, the infrastructure, you have to have the access, you have to have the internet access. So you need a high-speed um, bandwidth connection. So this is most likely going to be something when you're working from home, you're going to have you know, a cable modem or you're going to have maybe a fiber to your home or something like that that's going to bring internet to your house. So um, in that regard, there's a few things you, you should probably need to be leery of. Um, you need to look at how that bandwidth can be um, compromised. And what I mean by compromise, we have in there, be wary of leeches. Not only are people moving to work from home rapidly, but you know everyone else is moving to, <laughs> to home as well. So there's extended periods of people being, you know, kids being out of school, um, you know, people kind of being you know, hunkered in place and, and doing things from their home. So there's going to be a lot of people, you know, streaming your, your favorite Netflix or HBO show. There's going to be people that are be gaming and all these other things. All these things take bandwidth off of your off of your network. Not to, also, uh, depending on the kind of connection you have, there's two or three kinds of connections. You can have, you know, a fiber to your house, which brings a dedicated connection, which is great, but you might be on an older technology like a DSL, which is actually a, a distributed um, broadband connection that's brought into a neighborhood and it actually it's a shared connection so um, many of you who maybe have done some work from home before will notice in the evening if you're on that kind of uh, that kind of device your daytime may be great but when people start coming home they start turning on their um, you know their internet at home come home from the office and they're firing up Netflix or whatever your bandwidth might start dropping so you may have issues both from within your your household and also your neighborhood that could that could lead to some bandwidth issues. So be aware of the different kinds of things. To that extent, we also highly recommend having a backup device. Everyone at Innovative E that has um, you know regular connection with with our customers and our teams geographically has at least a primary and a backup. And the backup is almost exclusively some kind of wireless device. So I personally have a Verizon. Um, they call it a MiFi Puck. It's a dedicated device. It's dial-up. Um, I like Verizon um, for this reason because my phone is AT&T, so that gives me two different um, systems. So I, I, you know, I really have I really have three systems there, right? I have my internet connection, then I have my AT&T, and then I have my Verizon. And my Verizon is a, is a hotspot, and I can fire it up and have as many as five people or five devices connected to it. That's a good way to do it. You also can connect through your phone. You can do tethering and things like that. So we have some people that do that. So devices, laptop, computer devices with high-speed connection, um, this is this is critical as well. Uh, I, if, if you're going to go with, it's most convenient if you have a laptop to go with a, um, you know, just a wireless connection, as most people know, um, which is great. But if you don't have a high-speed wired connection or, or, or wireless connection or Wi-Fi in your house, um, then that could be a problem. So you have to make sure you have one of the later um, routers that, that will allow, or wireless routers that will allow for that. Um, the use of multiple monitors is highly recommended. So why is this important? I mean, it's, it's advantageous if you're in the office or at home, but when you're at home, one of the things you find is one of the monitors is almost, or at least what we find is one of the monitors is almost exclusively used for um, the kind of some back channel communication, some just ongoing operational work that's going on. Um, maybe you're taking notes on your, on your computer, um, other kinds of things like that. That's why we say at least three is ideal. So you could have something that will have, you know, a collaboration application running. You might have a note taking or other kind of thing going and you might be participating in like you are right now. You're seeing my screen on your on your device as well. So having, you know, more than one is, is definitely ideal. And and when you get into this and I want to um, ask Sylvie to chime in here because we want to look at it from kind of the from multiple perspectives, you, you, you start to run into things like um, different resolutions of monitors. So Sylvia, I know when you started down this journey, when you started working with us and decided to do this, you, you decided to go buy two exact same monitors, right? So you didn't have an issue with, with different resolutions between those monitors. Exactly. Yep. And they, I bought them at the same time from the same corporation. They have the same, the same kind of color settings as well as the same resolution. So it makes it nice and clean 
um, yep. and you're not jumbling different different applications in different windows that don't match. Right. Yeah, because what will happen there, right, is if you have monitors with different resolutions, you dra drag an app from one to the other. And I actually have that situation because I'm using a couple of different things I had uh, around. And um, when I drag from one to the other, sometimes like my, if it's a, um, a web box or something, internet box, it'll it'll be really small on the other one, like just a line. You have to search mm -hmm. for it. So um, there's just weird little things like that that happen. So one of the other things that is highly recommended is a um, is a headset. Um, and that's because headsets typically don't pick up background noise as, as badly as um, as a, a PC speaker um, would pick up because PC speakers are, are meant to be, or PC microphones are meant to be kind of broad, um, you know, they're wide spectrum speakers where the, the microphones on a headset is a more directed speaker. And, and by a headset, it's also what I recommend is using one that actually has the little toggle around or the little microphone that comes out in front of your face instead of one that's built into the head. Because again, the microphone there tends to be a, a more of a, a broad, what they call omnidirectional microphone, um, going back to my days of playing music. Um, so a more unidirectional microphone is, is more, more desirable. The other thing is a wireless is best. Um, there's a couple reasons for that. Uh, over the years, I've had a lot of wired microphones and if through a lot of use, sometimes the connections get a little um, frazzled and, and then you start creating static on the line for the, the people that you're talking to on, on your, your meetings or, or webinars or any kind of a virtual conversation. So wireless, you won't have that issue. So um, I'm actually using a Jabra um, wireless. I just got about two or three months ago and I love it. Um, it, it holds about a 15 hour charge so I can get through a whole work day. The other thing, and Sylvia will talk a little bit about this, is some best practices around um, being at your desk. I, I, I hate being stuck at my desk where I can't even get up because I'm wired to it with a headset or whatever. So with this wireless, I can get up and I can walk 30 or 40 feet you know, while meetings are going on if I don't have to be in front of the screen. Um, of course, you need a mobile phone. Uh, it almost goes without saying for multiple reasons. Um, and you know, there's these things might be provided or they might be, you see the term up there, BYOD, bring your own device. Um, then there's a lot of software that almost everybody has software and, and probably some cloud-based software that they're using for productivity. So your your office, so it would be Office 365 or G Suite from Google or something like that. Um, and those that parlays into the collaboration components, which it's really good to have the, the collaboration Software where you can do things like co-authoring, um, that you have a collaboration platform where you can share files and do those kind of things. And then that kind of parlays into things like um, the next uh, thing there's the meeting and interactive facilitation. So the meeting software is, is really critical and that you really get to know how those the feature functions work in there. And then for interactive facilitation, like you saw me do a poll, I'm gonna do another one in a little while, I do those kind of things. Um, and figuring out the right software that works best for you for the, for the different um, application. Um, because they're not one size fits all. So do, do you have anything else to add to that, Sylvie, before we move on to the ability? Well, I'll just mention, um, so I have pretty good internet, but every once in a while something will happen. A couple of weeks ago, there was some construction uh, nearby and my internet went down. Uh, fortunately, I wasn't in the middle of a meeting, but I had one coming up very quickly. And so I ended up grabbing my phone and using it as a hotspot. So just that'll be one of the things in the tips and tricks um, might not come to mind immediately when you're in the midst of that crisis. Um, but it's it's been uh, really helpful. Yep, that's that backup device that's highly recommended. Absolutely. Mike, All right. we have a yes. question. Uh, it says download and upload speeds appreciated. Could you circle back to... Uh, you know the like the DSL, the fiber, and give some example download upload speeds. Uh, yeah, I mean th these are going to be more um, from a just kind of our experience. Um, I currently have uh, I'm on a DSL. I moved recently, and I moved into a part of an older neighborhood where um, I'm on the back end of a trunk. Um, and I'm about 1,800 feet from what they call the pop or the point of presence. So my download speed is about 50 megabit per second, um, which is adequate. But I do see on, on occasion it'll drop down to about 10 or less. And when that happens, I start to get some degradation of, of performance on, on meeting and collaboration things. So um, if that happens, that's where I'll go fire up my um, Verizon puck, which, you know, it's, it's a, about, theoretically, it can do up to close to a gigabit. Um, and now it's over wireless, so it's not quite that good. Um, but if I get under 10, 5 to 10 in that range, um, I'll, when I start seeing those issues, that's when I go to my backup device. Um, I know folks that have like um, 
some of our folks have direct fiber to their house and they get 300 megabit down, which is awesome. Um, the upload speed probably needs to be at least in the range of five if you're doing anything where you're using, um, like I am today, where you're actually collaborating and it's an interactive collaboration. If you're just doing web-based, there's a lot of tools and a lot of a lot of these collaboration tools will have a web-only piece. Now you can't, it's almost one directional then, there's very little interaction you can do with it, but when you're on the, the thin client only, they call it the web, um, it's, it doesn't require as much bandwidth. So I hope that helped. Did I answer the whole question there, Pamela? Uh, looks like it. Uh, okay, awesome. Yeah, if there's more questions, we're gonna, we're gonna provide some more Q&A time and we're happy to do follow-ups afterwards as well. So getting on into the environment, um, so one of the things that, that we've learned is it's really good to have dedicated space, especially if you can get a separate room with a, with a door is ideal. Uh, and and that's that's true of any any situation, but now when you know more people are coming home, um, you know, some of us now have other folks that are now working from home that didn't work from home all the time. And being in the same room can be very disruptive if you're on calls at the same time. So if it's all possible, you know, have a separate room. There's, room. There's also good reasons to have the door with family members <laughs> around um, and kind of setting, we'll get a little bit more into the cultural aspects of it, uh, of kind of setting it as a, you know, this, hey, I'm at work. Um, and when the door's closed, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm working and that means you need to, to honor that. So the, um, if you don't have a dedicated room, that's okay. But one of the things we also find that a lot of folks will do is they'll carve out a place in the house that, that's theirs um, for working. Or even if it's like the dining room table, that's fine. But then everyone, you know, kind of in the family needs to understand that that needs to be cleaned off before the next morning because, you know, somebody's going to be sitting down and going to work there that next day. So, you know, things like that need to be taken into consideration. Um, I'm actually going to let Sylvie cover a few of these others. There's some some other organizational strategies I think that um, people have learned that really, um, and, it, and it's really what works best for you, but here's a few things that we've put together. So, uh, so if you want to cover some of those other ways to help you stay organized and, and in your environment. Sure, absolutely. Um, and, and these things apply in a, a work environment, <clears throat> excuse me, that's a, an office as well, but when you're doing it in a home office, when you're working from home, um, it's that much more crucial. So we thought we'd uh, highlight a few of these things. This is a little bit about knowing yourself and know what works for you. Some people are uh, really visual folks and benefit uh, very greatly from having a whiteboard. And so if you are at all able to put one up in near your workspace so you can stand up and uh, draw yourself a little map of what you're talking about or sketch something out, uh, that tends to be really helpful. I like to take notes occasionally on just plain paper. Sometimes it's almost doodles, but um, at the beginning of my experience working from home, I would find that I would constantly run out of paper. And because of the way mine's set up, I keep my supplies um, across the house in a different room. Uh, so it took me a little while to learn that, okay, I need to have these particular supplies within arm's reach. Uh, so that just took a little trial and error. But the, again, that was knowing how I, I happened to work. Um, and also like in a an office, regular office environment, if I would call it that. Um, keeping focused and motivated, uh, again, it depends on individual preferences and tolerances for distractions and so forth. Uh, but if you're someone who's easily distracted uh, and you have your office where you're looking outside at things that are um, attention grabbing, maybe you want to <clears throat> rotate your situation so that maybe your back is to the window or whatever it is that you need to do to eliminate those things that are going to cause you personally distractions. Um, so if you're distracted by a television or whatever, then you know you want to keep that out of that room. Um, also, some people find that when they're home, and if you're in a situation where you're home by yourself, um, sometimes folks find that uh, distracting in and of itself, just the silence. So they like to have something on in the background to kind of keep themselves occupied or, or feel like they have company. So maybe some uh, soft music or something like that is a, just a, a helpful hint. Yep, absolutely. Yeah, it's good stuff. Um, so we'll, we'll move forward to the next one. I don't, don't see any other questions yet, but um, so we're actually gonna get you to be engaged again. Um, so, 
do you feel that you have the right tools? So uh, I'm going to read these out and then I'll start the poll up. Um, you know, yep, I feel good with the infrastructure, to have apps and, and any redundancies I need. I feel pretty good, but might have some failure points. Um, I have some of the components, but need more or, uh oh, uh, I'm in trouble. So <laughs> with that, I'm going to launch the, uh, the next poll and give everyone a couple minutes. The poll should be rendering now. You should be able to see the, um, the radio buttons there. Looks like it's uh, looks like it's up. So, and people are starting to to vote now. Yep, see them coming in. All right. Yeah. All right. Yep. And everybody's participating. That's good. We've got over eighty percent of voted. Somebody hadn't voted yet. See, I can see that. <laughs> I can't actually see who it is that hasn't voted though. It's not that it's not that uh detailed. So, okay. So I see that uh, most folks have voted here. I'm going to go ahead and close this poll and then I'll uh, I'll give you guys the results. So, it looks like what we're looking at here is about 50, oh, let me see. Get my pen going here. Pen 50 Oops. Let's see. There we go, 58% feel good about what they've got. 25 feel pretty good. Uh, we got 17 and nobody's in trouble, so that's good. That's good, 60% feel pretty good about the the apps and, and all the devices and redundancy, so that, that's awesome. Thanks for participating in that. So now we're gonna move forward with the other two areas. So the, the next area is really around the area of alignment. And we've broken that down into kind of process structure and work management. So what's important here is to kind of have the clarity of roles. So if you work on a large team and you've been working and doing something like software development, you probably have a pretty good idea of what you have on your, on your, uh, on your plate. Although even in those, there's, there's a lot of, folks who have, you know, daily interaction, stand-up meetings, those kinds of things. So um, it's good to make sure that you have, you, you're clear on your role, um, that you're clear on your work focus, both strategic and tactical, you know, one of the, the priority things you should be working on as well as the, the kind of the work that just needs to happen. Um, the goal setting, and that kind of goes to task backlog. So there's there are a lot of people who are more daily oriented and task oriented. So if, if that's the case for you or any of your employees or anyone on your teams, um, it's good to, to build some backlogs of things that folks can go because the, no matter what tools and techniques you use for work at home or, or virtual work, it's, it's, there's just not as much communication. You just will suffer some lack of communication there. So it's good people always know kind of well, from a process perspective what it is that they, they need to be working on. You may have to spend some time helping build these backlogs and rebuild them um, and, and help people understand how the priorities are, are, are to be set. So. Um, the next piece is really under structure. I, just, yeah, um, go ahead. I'm sorry, Mike. I, just one other thing I'd like to mention there. With uh, larger groups of people working from home, uh, some of the roles and focus, as well as potentially some of the goals, might be shifting here from how it was when everybody was actually in office. Um, some of that might be because folks, uh, some folks don't have the type of access that they need. Some of it might be because uh, you know somebody's got two infants at home or something along those lines. But those role clarities is very important as you're making the transition in general, but much, much more so right now as there might be things that are, that are shifting. Yep, absolutely. The next piece there is structure, routines. Um, one of the things that I found a long time ago, and it's an article I read um, years ago, is setting up your day, and I mentioned it a little bit earlier, is, is set it up like a work day. So I, I literally get up and I put on work clothes, I put on a collared shirt, and, and I go to the office that I have, my home office, and I, and I close the door and, I, and I'm there by a certain time and I schedule to be there to a certain time at the end of the day. Now, you know, there's gonna be flexibility in that, and, and we'll talk a little bit more about the culture of working from home and, and how there has to be some flexibility in that. Um, but that really helps me um, kind of really stay focused on what is my work day and, and get into the right mindset. And, and it also helps because, you know, we'll, we'll talk a little bit more about things like one of the reasons I fired up my, um, my video at the beginning is there's a lot of nonverbal communication that happens, whether you're communicating um, with, a, um, with a colleague or with, with 
customers or other other folks that are out there that you might be working with, um, wherever you can using webcams is is a good idea. Um, and and of course, it's nice to already have your your work clothes on when you're <laughs> when you're going to uh, have an ad hoc meeting or something like that. So, um, and I think that goes to consistency and flexibility as too. Wouldn't wouldn't you say, um, um, Sylvie? And and maybe you could talk a little bit about some of the routines and things that that you've done. Or seen. Yeah, absolutely. I think. Um, one of the areas where it goes back to that first slide that you were showing where, you know, what your friends think you're doing, they think you're, you know, playing video games or whatever. Um, mm -hmm. Keeping those routines keeps not just yourself, but everybody around you understanding what your structure is for the day. So, for instance, I have teenage children and helping them understand that even though I'm sitting here, I'm actually working. And even though I might not be on a call at a particular moment, I have things that I need to get accomplished. Um, and while I can and do take time to address their needs, I also need to get my work done during the workday. Otherwise, I'm working 12 hours or whatever. So it those structures are helpful for not just yourself, but for everybody around you and also for your colleagues to know that hey, I take lunch from this time to this time when, when it's feasible or uh, whatever that happens to be. And that's particularly true if you're working across time zones. So that, that core level of consistency I find is super helpful with, of course, the recognition that there's life happens, right? Things are gonna need to be flexible, both for yourself and also for your colleagues, you know, you might have anticipated talking to somebody at a particular time, but hey, you know, their dog just got sick or whatever. So, um, yeah, it's really it's just about uh, recognizing your own situation and and realizing that other people have similar sets of constraints. Yep, absolutely. And then the next piece there is really the work management and um, Sylvia and I have talked a lot about this when when you're working in an office space, one of the things that you, that, you know, I, I, we've all done and I, years ago, I was working in office all the time. I would take my commute time into the office. It was like my prep time, you know, half hour, hour drive or a commute on a public transportation or whatever it was. It would give me time to think and reflect on what I was going to do in my day. When you work from home, you wake up and you do whatever that morning routine is. But typically I'm and sitting in my chair ready to go to work within 15 minutes of the time that I've kind of gotten up and got going. So um, there was really no time for, for reviewing up upcoming stuff. So this has kind of organically grown throughout our enterprise. I talked to different folks, Sylvia and I were talking about it. And, you know, what do you do to, prepare, to plan for that? And, and I think most of us all do something the, night, the afternoon or day before, right? We look at the upcoming activities. We look at the calendar items to see, is there something I need to be prepared for in the morning? Is there work deliverables that I need to be prepared for at least the, the evening before, if not the, the afternoon before? Um, so do you have anything you'd like to add to that, Silly? No, I'd concur. Um, for myself, I, I'm not a real morning person, so, uh, but I find that um, that quote unquote morning commute, I've, after working from home for a while, I, I've changed my routine a little bit and I add I buffer myself about 15 minutes or so. I make a cup of tea and I kind of meander around my kitchen and whatnot. Um, and that's kind of my commute time where I'm thinking about the things that I have on the calendar for the day. Right. Um, I also, just as a, a check here, um, I know we scheduled this for I think 35 minutes and we're right at the bottom of the hour at 35 after. Um, as we were preparing this, we realized we had a lot more content so we're gonna to continue to go for about another 10 minutes. We've got another section to cover. Um, if anyone does have to drop, we understand. We will have this recording. We'll be distributing it along with other assets. So I just wanted to put that out there. Um, so the culture is the next piece. And um, this gets into, you know, from the employer and employee perspective, the cultures are, are, are built. They're not dictated one way or the other, right? So um, from an employer perspective, I think one of the things Innovative V has done is we've, we've established office hours for our employees and our, and our, and our customers, everyone kind of knows what hours we have that are our standard working hours. Now, with that comes some flexibility. Like, like Sylvia was saying, life happens, right? You're gonna have to go, um, you know, take the dog to the vet or <laughs> you have to do something, you know, that you didn't have to, wouldn't ordinarily come up and they couldn't plan very far around. But for the most part, you know, you have those office hours where everybody can understand. And, and that's very beneficial for all kinds of constituents, including your colleagues. Um, 
we talked earlier about the use of cameras for formal and informal discussions whenever possible. We do that quite a bit. We have, um, you know, we, we try to stay connected and you'll see it in the next one. Um, the virtual cooler talk is, is I think it's really important that it's not only um, understood that it's going to happen, but it's really, it's encouraged and that even the leadership and, you know, if you're in a position where you're managing folks, um, you know, don't necessarily start every meeting with, you know, this is what we're going to do in the meeting and we have to hammer it out. Or if you do that, that's fine. But also find us some time to connect where you would have connected with people before in the break room or, you know, in the elevator or something else at the office. It's important to connect at a human level and not just keep it, you know, just all work. And it's it's easy to get focused into that just work mentality, um, kind of, especially when you're alone. So to try to be you know try to create that culture both from the employee and employer side to to encourage people to 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 stay connected and one of the things we do you know that next point is we spin up team chats and calls all the time on daily there's something that comes up and we say hey let's get you know three of us on that or two of us or five of us whatever and we'll all jump on a call and um and we'll have a 15 or 20 minute discussion about whatever that thing was um maybe it was scheduled or maybe it was a an ad hoc discussion but um you know plan on talking frequently and, and make that part of your culture and what you do. Um, so is there anything on those you'd like to, to add to or any thoughts, Sylvie? No, other than just to, um, I have been surprised myself on a personal level and, and Mike and I have talked about this. Um, I am surprised how often I have to remind others in my life that I'm at work while I'm working from home. Um, whether right. that means people who are calling me on the phone and expect to chat or yeah, interruptions from household members. So um, right. just something to be aware of as you enter this. Uh, a lot of you, according to the survey, a lot of you've worked from home at least somewhat. Um, it's different when you're working at home every single day. Yeah. Yeah, it's easy to, and, and that's why we put in there the last two points, really train yourself to be present at work. So, you know, establish some of these, these um, habits and some of these things, but also um, don't allow yourself to be distracted. It's important to go have ad hoc discussions and things, but you are at work and, and you need to be at work. And it's easy um, to have people jump in and provide distractions. It's easy to get, you know, especially with all the things going on right now, let's go spin off and be watching um, news cycles and things that are, you know, taking you away from doing your work. Um, but it's important that you, you that you do be present and concentrate on getting your work done as well. And that goes to that second point that Sylvie was just saying. I've been virtual um, for the better part of the, the, pretty much the last 15 years, and it still amazes me. Some of the same people, and I won't name names, but you know, family members or other folks will still call me or or, or show up and say, "Hey, what are you doing?" As it's 2:15 in the afternoon. I'm working. Are you on a meeting? No, I'm working. <laughs> so sorry, but I have to stuff to do and and I, I can't, you know, is, is it, you know, I ask the question, is this really important or critical? No, I just wanted to chat. All right, well, I'll talk to you in a little bit when I'm done working. So um, it's really important to 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 feel that, you know, you you almost have to empower yourself, I think, to to say I'm at work. And, and then that helps you continually retrain others for those things. So and I would uh, just add to that for those of you who are working at home um, for the first time or <clears throat> expect to be doing that for several weeks, I would um, say set the precedent early. Uh, these are maybe many people's first days. Set the precedent early. <laughs> I can't say that enough because if otherwise you'll be spending a lot of time trying to retrain people. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and I, I think um, this next slide, um, Sylvia, if you want to cover some of these, I think this is really important stuff um, for folks who haven't, um, and, and maybe even folks who have to kind of, re it's a good refresher, especially with the things that are going on today. Um, it's important to um, to have some mechanisms. To yeah, kind of cope. absolutely. Yeah, work is stressful wherever it is that you're working from. Work can be very stressful, very demanding. You've got deadlines, uh, you know, quarters closing or whatever it is that's going on. So um, there's plenty of reasons to be stressed at work in general. When you're working at home, there are additional stressors. The, um, I know some people that I talk with occasionally feel guilty because of the, the, the you're not available like you would be if you were off and at home. So those people who are trying to interrupt you and you're saying, no, I'm sorry, I'm working. There's, you know, there's, there's all of these uh, conflicting things that are going on. But with the current situation around the world right now, um, 
there's additional stress and a lot of people we recognize are feeling anxiety. Um, many of the people are going to, whether it's the people on this call or people you know, you're working from home perhaps for the first time ever, or at, at a minimum, you're probably working full time from home with very little advance notice. And many people are feeling ill-prepared and they're anxious about the process, but they're also anxious about all of the things that are going on in the world. So as part of that, we wanted to just remind you all that prioritizing your own well-being is super important. Um, so doing those nurturing, supportive things and being compassionate with yourself and others is going to really help you through those stressful times. So whether it's making sure you prioritize getting a good night's rest or reminding yourself to stay hydrated. Um, when I first started working from home, I would find I would sit at my desk literally all day. Um, I'd, eat, I'd, I'd get up and grab my lunch and sit at my desk and eat it. And I wasn't it, I, I wasn't drinking enough water and I, and now for a while I had to like literally set a reminder of uh, a timer then I then I'd get up and I oh, okay um, so now I I really make a point of making sure that I get up every once in a while walk around uh, you know stand up I got myself a standing desk occasionally I use that not as often as I should probably but um, that helps um, eating healthy foods. And, and do take breaks from time to time. If you were in a regular office, you would have those water cooler moments. Um, so it's okay to take a small break from time to time. Just you know, remind yourself to keep it short um, because it's, as Mike had talked about earlier, it is easy to get distracted or you're just trailing off the self break that you had and then someone comes up and, hey, you know, what's going on? So those are challenging. Um, but it but it is important to connect with your tribes, whether it's your coworkers, your family, your your kids, your friends, your neighbors, whatever um, our communities need us. So connecting with them and making sure that you stay active in the things that you were active in before is super important. Um, one of the things that uh, we hear a lot about in these recent times is this whole notion of social distancing. Um, and I just wanted to remind everybody that social distancing doesn't actually mean social isolation. So we can use all of the technologies that we have, like we're doing right now, to stay connected and to actually, in some cases, people might become more connected because they're, they have no other options but to use these technologies. So yeah, that's a great point. Yeah. In in closing, I guess for for this, I just say you know cut yourself some slack from time to time. That doesn't mean uh, be a slacker. It just means you know give yourself a break a little bit. Life's going to happen. Um, things aren't going to go perfectly all the time. So just keeping things in perspective and um, considering all of the positive things that are going on with working from home. Um, you yeah. know, lack of commute. Probably no one's uh, stressed about that part. <laughs> Yeah, being able to spend more time with with, with family um, to a point, right? <laughs> <laughs> um, but at, at this, you know, so we put most of these things together on this slide, and it, I think it's really good. I mean, it kind of goes to that that you know, those who've traveled a lot on airlines, you know, the the idea of put the mask on yourself first before assisting others, because you, you're no good to anyone else if if you're if you're no good <laughs> if you burn yourself out um, or you get physically you know, ill or something. So take care of yourself and, and that'll help you take care of others. And I think that's what is, this is really all about in, in the context and trying to put it in the context of, you know, working at home. Yeah, and, and not just for yourself, but your family and then your workplace is going to benefit yeah. from that too. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Awesome. Okay, um, that brings us to um, kind of the, um, Conclusion. We're welcome to. You're welcome to put any uh, questions in the chat uh, or in the question pane, and we'll answer them here. Um, after this, um, we will be putting a recording um, of, of the webinar itself, the deck itself. Um, the we're, we're working on and almost to finish a quick reference guide. Um, everything's happening pretty quickly in here, and we're going to put that out as well. Um, if you have any questions past this, feel free to re reach out, and and you know we're ha happy to have some more conversations. Um, we're actually going to do this, we're going to convert this into a series 
and provide some additional pieces. We'll be diving into the different areas. The next one will be next week. I think we're going to do it on Tuesday. We haven't quite created the link, so we'll actually give you a link to that as a follow-up to this as well if you signed up. Um, and it's going to go into more of the technology components first before we go into the other areas of the infrastructure. Um, and then we're just basically going to kind of talk about kind of what we what we do and what works and then answering questions and see if there's anything we could help you out with there. Um, beyond that, we're probably going to be going into more of the, the tools themselves as well. Um, when you get it, when I mean tools like the collaboration tools and some of the other pieces. Um, so and, and we don't know how many they're going to be, but probably be at least four or five in the series by the time it's all said and done. Um, and the last piece there is if you have any questions, um, you know, from, from like an organizational perspective, if you'd like personalized demonstrations of how we use the technology or some of the things we do, we actually, you know, productivity is kind of our, what we do as well as how we do it. So um, we, we have a lot of knowledge in that space for work management productivity solutions. So happy to have kind of some personalized demonstrations um, for kind of how we do things and what we've done for clients and all that kind of stuff. So, you know, just feel free to reach out to us. Um, Pamela, are there any other questions or comments? Uh, we did have someone ask um, fairly early on, what bandwidth is high according to your definition, uh, going back to the discussion about fiber versus DSL? Yeah, yeah. I think I think I was saying, you know, what seems to be a pretty good bandwidth is, you know, for for me, what I've noticed is anything over 10 or 15 megabit download five up seems to support the tools that we're using. I don't have degradation performance. Um, anything below that um, seems to to cause some problems. Um, you know, you, most providers you'll you'll be getting probably at least 30 to 50 down, which should be fine, and at least you know 10 up. So that should be good. If you start to drop below that, you'll probably see degradation performance. You'll start to get some choppiness um, and, and maybe drops of calls and video shares. Um, and that's when you know I encourage you to have a separate device that's off that bandwidth, whether it's your cell phone or a MiFi puck. Um, again, I'm not promoting one over the other, but Verizon's, I think they still use the CDMA technology, which is basically a, um, it's a straight like RF technology seems to be a little more reliable in terms of having the um, than like the AT&T digital. I have both, um, but for constant bandwidth connection, my Verizon puck works better than tethering my AT&T phone. So just for what it's worth. Anything else? I'd just like to add if any of you on the call are inspired to give us your feedback and tell us what sorts of things that you'd really like to know more about. Uh, that can help us um, refine our additional offerings. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. That would be great. I really appreciate that, Sylvie. So thanks, everybody, for joining. Thanks, Sylvie, for, for helping with this and, and Pamela for moderating. Um, I guess with that, if there's nothing else, we'll go ahead and conclude the webinar. Thanks, everybody, and uh, en enjoy working from home. <laughs> Take care. Bye now. Bye.